of the Seven Mile Bridge. This is uh, fantastic. It's wow. I, I don't know, I, why do I feel like we're the only ones who've never been to the Keys? We are not the only ones. This water is like aquamarine. It is fabulous. Wow. Wow. Heading into Key West, this is our first time riding on it. It's amazing. There's the view coming in, the water. Here, look it's at amazing. This. Look at this. So I, don't know, I don't know if you guys could see that, but that water is aquamarine. It's fabulous. It is breathtaking. Just try to take it all in. Like I said, the water is so gorgeous. I have a fear of dark water, but this water I would get in. This water is stunning. Love it. I can't wait to get there. set up here yesterday, the uh, KOA yesterday evening, yeah. and uh, today was our first full day here, but we're getting a late start today because of uh, some issues, technical issues, <laughs> and we're going to head on down to the Keys to, at this time, it's at 1 o'clock, 1.15? It's a little late. It's a little late, but we're going to go down just to, you know, Let's just go check it out. see what we can do. We'll and, go back. You know, we got time to go back, but mm -hmm. all right, we're going to head on out. Let's go. Right. Sometimes... The bus plan of attack is to have no plan. Is that our plan today? No plan? <laughs> our plan is no plan. All right, we drove around for a while trying to find a place to park. We found something, we think. We knew this time of day it was going to be difficult to find a place to park, but we found a city park, Nelson English. It's a, it's a public park, so Nelson English Park here in the Keys, in the Key West, and it's a couple streets down from Duval. Duval Street, sorry, yes. So we're gonna stay there, we're gonna park, we'll let you know how that turned out, but so far it does not didn't look like see, there's any. Didn't see anything that said you couldn't park there. Awesome is that? It's great. That's great. The Ernest Hemingway House was the residence of American writer Ernest Hemingway in the 1930s. The house is situated on the island of Key West in Florida. Due to its association with Hemingway, the property is the most popular tourist attraction in Key West. The residence was constructed in 1851 in a French colonial style by wealthy marine architect and salvager, Aza Tift. From 1931 to 1939, the house was inhabited by Hemingway and his wife, Pauline Pfeiffer. They restored the decaying property and made several additions. It is also famous for its large population of so-called Hemingway cats, many which are polydactyl.
During his time at the home, Hemingway wrote some of his best received works, including the nonfiction work, Green Hills of Africa, The Snows of Kilimanjaro, The Short Happy Life of Francis McCumber, To Have and Have Not, An Island in a Stream. After the Hemingway's divorce and deaths, the house was auctioned off and subsequently converted into a private museum in 1964. On November 24, 1968, it was designated a National Historic Landmark. The house and its grounds are inhabited by dozens of cats, commonly called Hemingway cats. Around half are polydactyl, sporting six toes on each paw. Legend has it that all cats on the property are descended from Snow White, a six-toed cat given as a gift to the Hemingways by a sea captain. The cats bear the names of celebrities, such as Humphrey Bogart or Marilyn Monroe, and have their own cemetery in the house's garden. While Hemingway was reporting in Spain in 1937, Pauline installed a large pool on the grounds, the first swim pool in the Florida Keys. The 24 by 60 foot, 80,000 gallon pool was immensely expensive at a cost of $20,000. It was two and a half times the purchase price of the entire property. We just finished touring the Hemingway house, and what did you think? I enjoyed it. Yeah, I we think did. It, I think it was a little expensive, but I mean, to I guess I'm sure for the upgrades and to keep it, you know, in decent shape and to feed all these cats. Oh my gosh, every couple of feet there's another cat. The six toe cats. Yeah, the six toe cats. And the story behind the six toe cats are very interesting. So the six toe cat was given to him as a friend and. By, from a friend and he just mm -hmm. fell in love with them and it went from there. You can take a guided tour if you want. Mm -hmm. You pay a little extra for that? No, you don't pay any extra for no? it. No? It, the only problem I have with that is it was a large group. So if you're in the back, it's very difficult to And it hear. was um, $17 per adult to get in. $17 per But adult. you can take your time and you can, you know, walk it at a slow pace. It's always fascinating to me to walk through someone's house, someone who's part of um, history, 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 and Americana, and it was, it was the same thing I felt when walking through uh, Graceland, and to walk through his house, and it, I read that Ernest Hemingway did not like gawkers, so he built that he had a six-foot-tall brick fence built around the property to keep the gawkers. So it makes you wonder how you would feel knowing that uh, people are actually walking around his house. And in his studio, where he did his writings um it's just kind of like, almost like a tree house to me it feels like it's not well, it, it's but a, it gives that you that feel yeah it's off to the side of the house they asked us not to film inside just film a little bit record a little bit little snippets here yeah they don't want people recording inside and putting it on youtube they want people to come here and participate in the tour which is understandable so i just recorded a few things inside but it is definitely if you've never been it's definitely worth taking a walk down history and yeah, anything historical, I mean, I, I find very fascinating. If you've been here before, leave a comment down below and let us know what you think. Did you like it? Did you in, um, Did you take the tour? Uh, did you enjoy it? What did you think? It's part of the the history of the Keys, of yeah. Key West. You think about Ernest Hemingway when you think about the Keys, or at least I do. Yeah. So, so I was really glad. We go. I'm glad we uh, okay. So check it out, guys. And once again, leave a comment down below if you've been here before. Let us know what you think about the Ernest Hemingway house. The following day, we had reservations to visit Dry Tortugas National Park. Make sure to plan accordingly. Reservations should be made months in advance. We arrived early to board the Yankee Freedom 3 for a ferry ride to the park. Been feeling trapped down on the floor. I don't know what for. Feels like I'm gonna lose. Silence. Located 70 miles west of Key West, Florida, nestled among spectacular coral reefs, fascinating shipwrecks, and sandy beaches, lie seven undeveloped coral and sand islands called the Dry Tortugas. These islands, along with surrounding coral reefs and waters, make up the Dry Tortugas National Park.
Dry Tortugas National Park is a remote island 70 miles west of Key West, Florida. Cars are not able to access the island. The only method of transportation are by boat or seaplane. Two and a half hours later, we arrived at the National Park. Once there, you have the option of enjoying the beaches, which provide swimming and snorkeling, or you can tour Fort Jefferson. Yankee Freedom passengers have the option of joining a 40-minute guided tour of the fort. You can also download a self-guided tour of Fort Jefferson. On Garden Key, the centerpiece of these pristine islands stands Fort Jefferson, America's largest and most spectacular 19th century coastal fort. Fort Jefferson itself is a six-sided building constructed of 16 million handmade red bricks. Imagine life here during the hectic 1860s. At its height, nearly 2,000 people lived within this remote city on the sea. Soldiers marched and trained in the broiling sun. Laborers and prisoners hauled bricks and supplies to the Masons who continued their never-ending task of building the fort. Women and children, though fewer in number, were a welcome sight here. Surrounded by disease, death, and suffering, one wife described Fort Jefferson as a dark, mean place. The fort's largest guns, known as 15-inch Rodman smoothbores, weighed 25 tons apiece. With a crew of seven men, they could fire a 432-pound projectile a distance of three miles. Several original guns still remain on top of the fort's walls. Constructed in 1876, this boilerplate Iron Harbor Light was built to replace the 1826 light that had been damaged by hurricanes. Iron was used in its construction instead of brick because military thinkers felt there would be less of a threat from shrapnel if it was impacted with artillery fire. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers faced many challenges during the fort's lengthy construction. Shifting sands, storms, and harsh conditions were common obstacles. The remote location hampered the shipment of supplies and skilled workers, especially during the Civil War. Meanwhile, sections of the fort started to sink. In an effort to limit the fort's weight and slow subsidence, the second tier was intentionally left incomplete. Sixteen million bricks. Large quantities of brick, stone, cement, iron, and lumber were shipped here from around the United States. Most of the bricks were made in the Pensacola area, a four-day journey by sailing schooner. But when Florida left the Union in 1861, bricks could no longer be obtained from these brickyards. Instead, they had to be shipped from as far away as Maine. These dark, Red colored northern bricks are easily visible along the top of the fort's walls. During the war, the fort also served an important function as a federal prison. The prison was established to house Union soldiers whose crimes had not brought the death penalty. The most famous prisoner to reside here was Dr. Samuel Mudd. He was one of the four conspirators sentenced to life imprisonment for their participation in the assassination of President Lincoln. Mudd resided in the fort until 1869 when he was pardoned by President Andrew Johnson. 
been feeling trapped down on the floor I don't know what for Feels like I'm gonna lose Silence takes a hold I can't let it go Chain up, no one knows But I won't let the stormy seas Throw me an open water Let me have my peace And leave me till tomorrow Wind into my sail Away from things I let go Floating on the waves We go bottoms up We go all the way When you're feeling down Push the pain away We go bottoms up We go all the way And face the another day We go bottoms up Tortigas National Park. A couple things to keep in mind when you're, uh, if you come out here, it is a long boat ride out, two and a half hours out, two and a half hours back. You're actually going to spend more time in the boat than you will on the uh, at the National Park. Um, but you can come out through a uh, Yankee Freedom, and they will provide you with breakfast, drinks, and uh, lunch. Was Yankee Freedom? Yeah, Yankee Freedom. Well, actually, it's okay. Yankee Freedom three. Um, they have a federal contract, so they're obligated to the mass mandate, in case you're wondering. So as of 2022, there's still a uh, mass mandate. Also, just, just as long as you're on the boat. When yeah, as long as you're on the boat. boat. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're, she's right. Katrina's right. When you get off, when you walk around the park and the beach and everything, uh, you don't need a mask. You want to hang out at the beach area and do some snorkeling, do some swimming. Between the months of October and January, you can walk over to one of the other islands and it's a kind of a bird uh, sanctuary. You can't go between February and September because that's when they're breeding. But you can walk over. Actually, it's kind of cool. There's just a little teeny strip of sand. You can walk right over to the other island. So it's definitely worth coming out here for a day. It's worth it. Um, it's a unique national park. I think most people don't get out this way and visit this national park or they don't may not even know about it and they also um one of the things that you get besides your free breakfast and lunch on the freedom you also they supply you with uh, snorkeling gear if you want to snorkel while you're here that yeah so you don't cars. really you don't Included. need to bring um your own snorkeling gear you can if you want to but it's included it's included you just have to sign up for it but um, yeah, it, it's worth it. I, the water was cold. Um, I think coming out here maybe later. Later in the year. You know, you're going to go to the Keys and you're going to be there for a week or longer. Um, make it's a, uh, it's a day trip. There's a whole day. Yeah, it's a whole so day. Plan, plan accordingly. Checking out the history uh, behind the, the fort. It's really cool. It's interesting. And um, it is, it's a beautiful area. It goes without saying, but it's a beautiful area. Bring something to swim in if you want to go swimming. Make sure you bring some uh, some water shoes if you have them or water sandals, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, the, the beaches, because I guess there are so many um, shells and whatnot. Parts of it are very soft, white sand. And then there's parts of the beach that are very um, rough. Coarse. Lots of coral, yeah. lots of broken shells and stuff like that. So water shoes would be a plus. Would you go back? Um, I would go back, but not right away. Maybe in a few years, something like and that. And if I went back, I might go back later in the year. Because yeah. I'd really like to spend a lot of time in the water. Well, it's so pretty and it's so crystal clear that aquamarine, I'd like to go snorkeling. But for me, it's just too cold today. Yeah. Hey guys, if you've ever been here before, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think. Uh, did you like it? Do you enjoy it? Have you been back? Would you go back? And um, is this on your list of things to do when you go to Key West. Let us know. Leave a comment down below. We're going to load back up here on the boat and uh, get ready to head on back. Been feeling trapped down on the floor. I don't know what for. Feels like I'm going to lose. Silence takes a hold.
hold I can't let it go Chain up, no one knows But I won't let the stormy seas Throw me in open water Let me have my peace And leave me till tomorrow Wind into my sail Away from things I let go Floating on the waves We go bottoms up We go all the way When you're feeling down Things I let go, floating 